Up next, we have Jack DeRose from Colony, uh, another community management and governance tool. And I think he'll kind of go into explaining a little bit more. No. Yep. Cool. Hello, everybody. I'm presenting Colony. Colony is a platform for decentralized autonomous organizations. The goal of it is to make it really easy for people to start organizations together online all over the world. Um, so the problem that we're solving is that lots of people would like to be involved in projects, but the trouble is that opportunity is pretty centralized in just a few places, but actually talent is really, really distributed. So it's quite difficult for a lot of people to get involved with things other than open source projects. Um, and secondly, it's also very difficult to manage a distributed workforce. Um, we're seeing more and more people becoming freelance. Uh, it's reckoned, I think, by Forbes that it, by 2020, as much as 50% of the US workforce will be uh, freelance, whilst at the same time, more companies than ever are growing. So I feel that there'll either be a huge growth in project management as a role, or software is going to need to mediate those relationships. And that's essentially what Colony does. So our solution is a platform that enables people to contribute to projects that they find exciting. And yeah, essentially, what if you could contribute to your, your, your time to projects and earn ownership of those projects just like you would if you were an angel investor investing money? So Colony makes it possible to have efficient, decentralized organizations by removing the need for hierarchical management. And we think that what this is going to mean is that it will be able to exist as a sort of aggregation platform that enables people to do all sorts of kinds of projects online. So, so the way that works is that rather than it being managers who set tasks and assess work and divide labor, the system helps people do that by aggregating the collective intelligence of, of lots of people who know about very specific skills as though they were sort of a single super intelligent manager. Um, so this comes in uh, a few stages. To begin with, users contribute by uh, cont suggesting ideas that they think should happen within their organization, uh, making decisions about other people's suggestions, doing pieces of work, and providing feedback. Um, and what the, the system is doing while people are doing that is essentially assessing what they are, what they are up to. So for every interaction that you make, the system scores you against other people. It compares you with the, uh, the um, reputations of everybody else who's uh, interacting with that system. And contributions are weighted according to the value that they've added. And Nectar, which is our sort of token which indicates ownership, sort of like equity, um, is distributed proportionate to the value that everybody's contributed. So we see it as being um, a, a layer that enables collaboration. And as such, we don't want to do everything. So it will be, we'll be able to integrate it with all the kind of softwares that you know and love. So far, we've already done GitHub. And I'll get into that when I do a demo. Um, and there'll also be an API, so you can use it for whatever you wish. There'll be two different models, the kind of like GitHub. Uh, the community version is free, open source. Uh, anybody can contribute to it. Well, anybody can contribute that's been invited to join the colony, and it's open competition. Uh, there'll also be a paid version, which is more for traditional organizations that want to become more self-organizing um, and become more efficient accordingly. Uh, right, I'll do the demo now. Here we go. So, uh, this looks a bit odd, but cool. Um, is that going to help? That's a bit better. Okay, so I'll just guide you through the uh, through the interface. So at the very top, you've got the the dude's avatar. So if we click on that, it's going to open his profile. Pretty standard, really, but 
The important thing here is that you can add tags, add your skills and interests. So that's really the most important thing that you do when you first start the platform. You add whatever things you might be skilled at in as granular detail as possible, because that is how you get, stuff gets rooted to you within your colony. So this guy, some kind of designer. Um, so the colors that go around the person's face indicate the kind of things that they do on the platform and in what proportions. So it's making suggestions about things they think should happen, making decisions, giving people feedback, doing comments and so on, and actually doing pieces of work. And then you've got this level, which is their, it's indicative in a single figure of their overall competence. So that level increases over time based on the amount of stuff that they've done and how good they are at doing it. So to begin with, it's purely quantitative. It's just about how much stuff they've done. But then over time, it becomes actually about how skilled they are. So if we go back to this profile, next to their skills, we've got all these numbers. And these, uh, these are their skill profile for that specific thing. Um, so as you get to higher levels, it's about, like, are you in the top 10th, 10th percentile for a skill? Are you in the top 5th percentile for 10 skills? And, the higher the level becomes, the more difficult it becomes to get there, obviously. So beneath the profile, we've got, um, we've got the tokens. So there's two tokens within Colony. You've got pollen, which is essentially like a fuel, it's used, or, or a currency is used to pay for everything you do. So if you make a suggestion, it costs you some pollen. If you make a decision, it costs pollen. Tagging things costs pollen. Commenting, pretty much everything you do costs you pollen. And the reason why you want to use that pollen is if you've done something good, like you've made a suggestion that was accepted, then not only are you going to get your pollen back so you can do something else with it, but also um, you're going to earn some nectar. And nectar is like ownership of the colony, sort of like equity, although, yeah. Um, so every 10 minutes, some nectar, uh, 50 nectar is created by the system. Of that, 70% goes into this colony central reserve. And that's used to pay people for doing sophisticated pieces of work that require human judgment to interpret the value of. So think things like coding, design, legal drafting, all those kinds of things. The remaining 30% is distributed amongst everybody using the system in proportion to the value that they've contributed by doing things like making suggestions, making decisions, tagging things, uh, giving people feedback, and so on. And that all happens completely automatically and algorithmically based on the effort that they've put in over the preceding 72 hours. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the colony's central reserve. Uh, and that's sort of under everybody's control, as I mentioned. And then this is this, is this dude's actual colonies that he's in. Uh, so you can be in lots of colonies. You can contribute to lots of different projects at the same time. Um, and this indicates the amount of nectar he's got in each one, and the little red flash is like he's got something to do. So if we go over into the top right-hand corner, we've got Teams. So Teams is kind of an important concept, and it's a bit of a misnomer because it's not actually the people that you work with. It's just like your, your friends, the people that you trust and you want to bring into the colony. Um, so when you join the colony, you can invite up to six people that you trust and believe are going to add some value to the project. Um, so everybody can do that. So a colony can grow to be arbitrarily large, but importantly, your purview within the colony is limited to the two teams that you're part of, the team that you were invited to and the team that you subsequently invited. And the reason for that is what the system is, on the whole, trying to do is to aggregate the collective intelligence of many people, as I mentioned, and in order to do that, you need to meet a few criteria, which are principally decentralization, so people are drawing on their own local knowledge, um, diversity, so they come from a, a variety of different experiences, and independence, so they're not unduly biased or influenced by any particular persuasive people. And so all of the functionality is kind of based around those principles. Um, so what being in teams means is that you can, you can sort of directly chat with these guys, uh, but you can't chat with people who aren't in your team. So you might have thousands of people, but you've got basically another 12 people that you can speak to. That doesn't mean that's where the communication stops. You, can, you communicate indirectly, stigmergically with everybody else. And then down here, you've got your most recent activity, so the stuff that you've got to do. Um, 
So in the, the middle is kind of where the magic happens. Uh, this white box up at the top, when you've got a suggestion that you think should happen, click in here, add your suggestion, add some tags that uh, are pertain to the skills necessary to, uh, to have an opinion about this, and then you just hit submit. And that will get sent out to anybody who's got any one of those skills. So here's a suggestion, here's what it looks like. Um, and you notice that you're being forced to make a judgment based on the informational merit of the suggestion alone. You can't see who's made the suggestion, so you can't be influenced by, by that knowledge. Um, you've got all the tags that people have applied, and you can upvote or downvote them by clicking or double-clicking. Um, you can add some more tags if you don't feel that those sufficiently encapsulate the skills necessary to have an opinion about it, perhaps bring some more diverse opinion in, and then you simply make a decision. So let's say we agree with this which we really should. Um, you can then see what other people think. You can see the comments that they've made. You still can't see who's made them, but you can up, down, vote them, do all that good reddity stuff. Um, and then you'd hit next and to get your next card. And so what's going on here is, is obviously voting, uh, but it's not trying to get to consensus. And it's not even trying to get to sort of perfect democracy, actually. It's just trying to make an efficient and collectively in intelligent decision in a timely fashion. So. What it's doing is sampling the statistical significance of the voting, and once it gets to a point where it realizes if it were to continue polling people, the outcome isn't going to change, it calls the decision. It either kills it off or it moves them on to the next stage. So what you'd get in practice after this would probably be another suggestion, or it could be anything, but this is a potted demo, so I've got a step-by-step -step process of a single suggestion. So I'm going to hit next, and it's going to give us the next stage which is to, sp to specify exactly what needs to be done to deliver that suggestion. So we've got the suggestion that was made, we've got the tags that were created, and the comments that people had made. And then you build the, su you build the specification out of three components, epics, tasks, and commands. So an epic, as you probably know from Agile, is like a container for tasks. Um, you use it to help structure things. Uh, a task is a unit of work suitable for one person. And then a command within Colony is something that can be executed programmatically by the system. And what that means for now is that it's integrated with GitHub. And so if somebody creates a pull request, rather than that going to a core dev or a, a manager, rather that gets given to all of the, gets shown to all of the people who've got an opinion about that, who've got those skills, and they vote to decide whether it's going to get merged in or not. So there's no manager at all. Um, you build the task, much like a, a Google Doc. It's a real-time updating, collaboratively editable document. It tracks the additions, deletions, and replacements that people have made to the text. You vote on whether or not you think those, uh, replace, those changes should be made. Uh, apply a deadline, which gets averaged from what lots of people think. And then you just vote on whether you think the state at which you're leaving the brief is, uh, is not quite ready yet, or, or it's good to go. So. Let's say we think this is good to go. It's going to move us on to the next stage, which is to decide actually who within your colony is going to do the task. So the system comes up with a short list of potential candidates who could do the task by comparing their reputation profile with the tag cloud that was agreed collaboratively. So you might say, you look at each one of these guys' profiles, or perhaps you already know them, and you say, OK, well, John Doe, he's, he's awesome. It'd be great if we could get him to do the task. This is known as a weighted preference vote, incidentally. Uh, you say James is also very good. Uh, Jerry Doe is completely useless. I don't know how he found his way in here. Um, these guys are both kind of middling. So, um, And then what the system does is average what lots of people think and offer it to the person who's collectively preferred, essentially the one who's most expensive. Um, if they accept the task, then great. If not, then it gets offered to the person who's next in order of collective preference. Uh, once they accept the, the nectar, the ownership, the equity, whatever you want to call it, goes into uh, an escrow contract. And they submit the work for approval. Uh, if it's accepted, then awesome. It get, the, the nectar gets sent to their private wallet. If not, then they iterate upon it with feedback from the colony until the colony is satisfied. And that's pretty much how it works. It's, it's like a big system of feedback loops. Um, so if I just go back to... Presentation, where is it? Here's here. So where are we now? We're in we're in private alpha. Um, 
we are, we've got a few people using it, always looking for more. So if you've got an idea, you've got a project and a team to engage, please get in touch. We're currently a team of two who've built all this over the last year. Uh, always looking for awesome people to join the team. So if you're interested, hit me up. And uh, we're currently fundraising. There may or may not be a crowd sale in the not too distant future. Um, here are the contact details. Join our Slack, please. Uh, more the merrier. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. A lot of exciting projects today.